the biggest uh, the biggest issue with with sand dunes it just the the road books they can't make them mm. completely accurate because overnight we could have a windstorm come in that could just completely change the whole track that they've went and what they call recce um, of the whole thing so the, the the zero car could have went through and checked it all and then the day before it just had a windstorm and then just completely changed the whole thing like the there could be another drop off that's not in a road book and you, you you just can't mark them so that were that was what was the biggest kind of concern was is just missing one of them drops um like pablo did and yeah and then really so is that what them. happened to him do you think that that was just different to what it was on the road book or was he just trying to send it because he had to uh it, like it's a bit of both like it's um coming into that last stage we we're both yeah um within a chance of winning winning a dakar rally and uh, a minute and two seconds spread apart um so for sure i knew that day was we we're both going to be at a full send mode um but like i know exactly where he had that crash like riding along that bit of the sand dunes there it was just like it looked like a flat nice big plain field of sand it was fairly compact um the other guys had been through earlier uh so because they do reverse order reverse Mm. grid with the cars and the bikes and stuff so um so they start from pretty much the last place bike and the last place car and come through back to first place where then the the first place guys cross the finish line last so the the sand was a bit churned up there was there was lines and stuff there that we could see but you to me where when we were when i was there um i kind of all i saw was the helicopter was on the ground and was i thought to myself it's a bit stranger because normally always helicopters are always in the air or uh, a helicopter's only there if someone's injured or hurt Mm. and um so i started to kind of go towards the helicopter a little bit because i thought that that was the lines had kind of spread a little bit so i i went to the right but where we were we just it looked like it was completely flat and you could have been wide open so like i'm really surprised yeah pablo didn't go off that thing wedge as, as you can see in the in the video like he does hit the brakes a little bit the front dives and then and then he tries to then he tries to, it, yeah. Yeah, to try and resave it and thinks yeah it's all good but then like then it was just too late like he really just had to commit and go and um yeah, that was a that was a long old drop. That was uh, not a not it wouldn't have been a pleasant um, pleasant hit. That's for sure. So if the chopper wasn't there and you didn't see the chopper, would you have followed that line? Do you think? Hard to tell now. I'm, yeah, I, I'm kind of hoping I wouldn't have, but because um, that would have that, sucked. Yeah, that one would have would have finished That'd me in the last rally, day. Yeah. That probably would have ended my rally for sure. Well, it it almost pretty much ended his. Like yeah, he's ended up now with a with a broken ankle um that he's already had surgery on and and trying to get back um back to 100 percent. so but i think the they were saying he's anywhere from a three to six month period where he's going to be out with, that, with that injury so he seems like a good dude too yeah from yeah. everything that you see like his yeah. personality and stuff yeah yeah he's yeah good dude with the rally and stuff and um yeah definitely knows how to swing off it and that was like i say we're coming into that last day a minute and two seconds apart and um yeah you'd be crazy not to to try and have have a crack at it and send it like he was i guess because that was that would have been his first back our rally win and, and and a first for for husqvarna so it was all or nothing that was um he definitely gave it at all and um unfortunately just didn't didn't work out and that was uh no yeah it's never good to see wait basically by the time i was at that june where he dropped off i was over to the right a little bit where the line i was going to take where i could have been actually wide open full gas and no problem but you just you just never know what's going to come up over those ridges and those rises and so every every now and then when you are by yourself in those areas um you shut off and then you get to the top of it and you look and it's completely flat and smooth and you, then you're angry at yourself you're just like why'd i back off it's yeah i should have just been full gas wide open and then you come across the next one do the same thing you, you just can't see what's on the other side and then you have this exact same thing a repeat and you're like ah oh, damn i should just be wide open then the third one comes along and you're like all right bugger it the first two were good just swing off it and go next thing pff, there it is and it it jumps up on you so that's that's the the difficult part with the dunes and you you can't make a road book completely accurate to mm. what's there so they can only kind of give you like a, a double caution for saying the next four kilometers uh, the dunes can be can be dangerous um 
for 4K. Yeah, for yeah. 4K. So it's like, yeah, which rest of time's in fine. between yeah. there somewhere, there's going to be one June that's going to probably <laughs> take you out of the race. So it's like, all right, it's a lucky dip. Let's have a bit, dig, put your hand in the in the can and just hope, yeah, we, we pull out the right number. So when you rolled up, because obviously there's the footage of you rolling up to see him on the ground, obviously you're making sure he's okay. What was that conversation like? Or did he just sort of say, I'm good, like, keep going? Or what was that interaction? Because obviously you can only see, like, the heli footage of it. Yeah, that's it. Like, basically, when I got to him, yeah, for sure, he, he'd hit his head pretty hard. Like, it, as you can see, he dropped off. And Dude, then basically massive. just massive, massive hit. So the shock that basically, yeah, I guess it came through through his, all his feet. And I'm sure he would have his head slammed. Well, the, you could see, like, the yeah, bang, like was, he whiplash on that thing. And there's, like, a dash on those bikes. That's it. Like, <laughs> you, head, you head butt one of them things. It's like just it's like walking up to a wall and just smacking your head into that thing as hard as you can. So they're solid. Like, yeah, we've we've had some really decent crashes and haven't even snapped one of them towers off. So, they're, they're like I say, they're solid. And, um, yeah, he when I, when, I, when I came around and seen him, a bike was laying in there was two guys i was like thought to myself oh, that's strange like surely it can't be pablo and then i was like well it wouldn't be really too many other people like the for, if it was somebody else that was starting in front of us like a slower guy mm. he'd already be off the track and gone so i kind of like rolled over thinking it's who who is it and then then i saw it was pablo's bike on the ground i was yeah just the first part of it i think from the footage yeah, you can kind of see i just like shook my head a little bit like just you couldn't believe being it. bummed I was yeah. like I can't believe it's him like on the ground and we're only 10 maybe 11 kilometers into the, the the last stage which was 112 kilometers so um yeah kind of just more so I was just like shook my head just not can't believe it's actually him and then and then pull up beside him and yeah like I say he was dazed he was eyes were crossed and didn't really I don't think he was registering too much of what was happening there where he was and then um Basically, I, I just tried to keep yelling at, yelling at him. And the guys were talking to me saying, yeah, no, we've got him, mate. He's all good. He's all good. You just keep going. And I'm just like, I'm trying to yell at him, mate. Are you all good? You're sweet. Bubba, you're like, all right. So you can and hear just, it from him. Not just to them. hear it from yeah. him and not from them. Um, but like I say, yeah, he was he was definitely a bit dazed and a bit confused of where he was at, I'm sure. And um, yeah, so uh, basically he kind of gave a little bit of a nod and was just like, Starting like trying to see if you feel like I think you just yeah like you say you got a, a back a good, good old whiplash and neck was sore and stuff and then so yeah basically uh, it like to, to the helicopter footage it felt like I'd I'd sat beside him there for about twenty seconds but then the mm. helicopter footage shows it was like about three four seconds but that's what I mean when you're stopped out in the middle of there in the middle of nowhere sometimes the time just feels like it's it's so long but. Um, yeah, then basically he, he kind of gave a little bit of a nod and he was there and he was like, he looked okay. Like I didn't know the extent, like whether yeah he'd broke wrist or broke ankles or whatever and stuff like that. And then, um, yeah, we're just, after the guy said, yeah, we've got him, it's all good, no problem. And I knew that he was in their hands and then it was just, all right, we, we got to, I've still got 90 odd, 95 Ks of myself to do. So we uh, better get back to the job and, and um, see if we can seal it off. But it's, uh, yeah, then... Then watching the footage, um, seeing me take off, it kind of looked like I roosted him a little bit, which looked like a bit of a dog move, but I promise you I didn't mean to do that. It was just soft sand and trying to take off and then trying to turn to get actually the way we needed to go. So, yeah, if he, if he watches it, mate, I promise you I wasn't roosting you as I was leaving to take off and yeah, rub it into you a little bit. But Well, that's the one thing that I actually noticed from the footage is that, yeah, like when you take off, you can just see a bot just dumped and you're out. But then when Pablo goes to take off, you can see that angle for whatever reason really shows you how hard it is to get the bike going, which yeah. I, that, that to me, I was like, holy shit, like that's a struggle just to take off in that shit. Yeah. In, in those dunes and stuff, like basically the, the tire we have, we either use a, like a desert tire. So it's, it's, it's kind of like a based off of like a bit of a, a road style type tire with like yeah smaller knobs and uh for that stage we did have like a, a bit more of a motocross tire that uh, michelin do make for us now and it does have a little bit taller knob on it and a little bit more spread apart but when they're i think for that stage because it was 112 kilometers uh we still probably have around 25 liters worth of fuel on board with us um where our capacity is about 30 32 33 liters full 
um, and we're only 10 k's into it so there's still weight, a lot of weight in fuel yeah. there's still like the three liters of water in the bash plate um, then plus myself I'm a, I'm a big guy on the bike and then all our riding gear yeah 145 <laughs> kg hey but I passed old Sam Sunland down that beach no problem he mate he noticed that didn't he he noticed it too yeah. and he tagged it and said 30 kilos extra and I passed him so I was alright but um yeah that's the thing it, it 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 is just it's just hard to even take off in that stuff with those bikes because they just they're so heavy they're 100 and pretty yeah full of fuel f- fully loaded with everything they're probably about 180 kilos worth of bikes so as soon as you dump that clutch the thing just wants to bury so it's like yeah you got to do a little bit of a little bit of a dog paddle i guess and try and keep the thing moving get a little bit of speed to then get up on top of it and get get moving so it's um it's hard work on all the bikes that's for sure it just uh it adds adds uh, a lot more stress on the motors it, it must have been a weird feeling to see pablo down and essentially he's out you win like basically unless you fuck up yeah but, but. you know you i know that you wouldn't want to win just because he did crash and i don't think anyone's doubting the win in any way but like for you personally as a competitor obviously he's a good dude yeah it it must have been a weird feeling like do you remember what was going through your head when you did let's say the first five minutes after you left the site of his crash like do you remember what you were thinking yeah, well, it's like after I took off and that, and then and got going and saw he crashed. It was like, oh, like I was just like bum for him. It was like at the end of the day, yeah, for sure. I'd hope the result would have still been the same, um, first, second, and third, where we were situated, like with that minute and two minute, minute and two, two second gap. Um, I'd still hope I would have come out in front, but um, and then still him being on the podium in second and whatnot. But after yeah, I took off, it was like geez did that just did that just really happen like did did that like is the race just about to fall kind of into my hands and then uh i'm i've just sort of finished this stage and 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 then i'm I'm all good but like still from uh what was it first second and third so uh walkner was in third basically i think he was about six and a half minutes behind um my overall time so he was still within a fighting chance of winning the overall as well. So it was like, I took off and I'm like, yeah, sweet, I've, I should I should have this all sorted. And just as long as I get through and hit all the waypoints and um, just cruise through, I'll, I'll be fine. And then, then I then kind of clicked and went across to that scenario that, damn, Walkner's only about a bit over six minutes behind me. So if he's on a charge, if he's pushing for the day, um, maybe he might make that six minutes up and then take the win away from me as well. So it was like, then then it kind of kicked in a little bit. Then I just started wrapping it back on in full throttle. And then then it was like probably another five kilometers later, I was like, no, nah, I've just got to just gotta calm down and just relax and do my own race. And whatever happens will happen. 